Hey everyone, this is Laura Bray at Laura Graham NYC on Instagram here at John's of 12th Street, um, an iconic New York institution known for their amazing Italian food and old school red sauce dishes and their amazing vegan menu. I am lucky enough to be here with one of the owners, Rob, who is nice enough to sit down with us and is going to tell us a little bit about the history. So let's jump right in. When did John's first open and then if you could bring us up to speed kind of from the opening until where we're at now and where, where you're at now here with John. Very good. Well, thank you for being here. And John's opened in 1908. The original founder, John Pucciati, uh, immigrated from Puglia in uh, Italy. And a lot of Italians settled in this area. Everyone thinks Little Italy, but East Village. So he opened up in 1908, and we've been here continuously since then. The Pucciati family owned it up through 1974. His son Danny, um, for the last like 10 years. And uh, Nick and Myron took over in 1974. Nick actually lived up the street, had his communion here. So his family was always coming here. And when, you know, John or Danny said, oh, we're going to you know, we we're going to retire, him and his buddy Myron came in and took over and uh, ran it up until 2017. It was Myron's wife, Judy, who, working with our chef, um, put in the vegan menu. They spent a year working on it and it's become popular around the world. People come and write books and tell other people about it and we've been hearing Gee, if you're not a vegan, but I am, we can go to a nice restaurant and have a meal together. And it actually is, is uh, we don't call it vegan Italian. It's Italian food happen to be vegan, and it matches well with our traditional menu, which most of it is from John's original recipes, right? We didn't really change that much over the years. So, and we go with that old European style of really full, but people always walking out with with bags, mm -hmm. all right? So we took over in 2017. My partner has been working here as the accountant for many years. My other partner has been here about 40 years. He was my waiter when my now wife and I had our first date here in 1993, February, and I brought her here to some day. film days. I was gorgeous, Perry Ellis coat. And uh, we had our dinner here and I, Things were going well, and I went to pay with our credit card. No credit cards back then. So, I left my coat, Perry Ellis again, and I figured I'll just go to an ATM, but there were none in the East Village in 1993. 20 minutes later, I wind up on Union Square. My then waiter, now partner, goes, is he coming back? Oh, his coat's here. Coat, he's coming back. When I got to Union Square, I got the money out and I decided how much do I want the coat back. And needless to say, I came back for the coat and here we are today. So we knew coming in the history of the place, it's a legacy um, restaurant and it wasn't broke. So the only thing we did was put in credit cards, <laughs> credit cards now. and. Everyone here, the kitchen's been here for many, many years. A lot of the staff, they know what to do. They're the heart and soul of this place. Everybody in the kitchen, our wait staff, everyone. And the best thing we did was to let them do their thing and make it so they can do their job well. So we've held that end of the deal up. It's been now six years, just this last, last May, six years, um, May 23rd. The reason why this place is iconic um, is because of all that consistency and the fact that the kitchen has been here for so many years. The owners, even though you know you haven't owned it forever, you've been here for all of it. And that's part of what makes these New York institutions so special and why they're worth highlighting and coming to over and over again. We know John's is known for huge portions, famous meatballs, parms, I mean, red sauce galore. Can you tell us more about the menu and even the vegan menu as well? Sure. So it's, it's traditional mid to northern Italian, which is red sauce, cheese, all that. 
you know, pasta. And pretty straightforward. It, it's not Nouvelle. It, it's traditional, good Italian. Like, I grew up in Brooklyn. And all my friends were Italian. My sip laws are Italian. So I know good Italian sauces, meatballs, all that stuff. And it's right there like the family. And we didn't stray that hardly at all. Our big with uh, people who love if they come in you don't know what to get we always say go to the chicken palm that big hit i've also come to love the uh eggplant rollatini i just and i'm not an eggplant but i inhale it so um all of that is great our veal pepetos the veal meatballs which uh, guy fieri featured are a huge hit um very flavorful pungent filling so that that's us. It, it's you coming here to eat. <laughs> it's a fill up. I think it's super cool and important that you have this beautifully curated vegan menu that um, you know people come here like you were saying they want all this hearty food and they're not expecting to come to this red sauce Italian joint and have vegan meatballs and vegan parm and indulge in all of these things so can you tell us more about this vegan menu that you've had sure uh, all the credit goes to Judy who was a previous owner and um, she was noticing that a lot of customers were going to a vegan restaurant on the corner called Angelica's I believe and there was a line of people because back then let's say 10 years ago or more there were no vegan outlets it was tough to be a vegan I suppose um, and as she's watching these people line up she thought we can maybe get some of these so her and chef spent a year developing this menu and you know the seitan and and the cheeses and the sauce and everything had to be perfect so you're eating Italian you're not eating vegan and it turned out to be just a, just a big winner. And um, we have people come in with people who aren't vegan, people who are vegan, they can come and have a meal together and no one's being shortchanged. You know, you're not eating leaves and sticks, so it's real stuff. So she gets all the credit for that and it has been, it's as popular, I would say, um, as our regular traditional menu and people come in and still order off it even if they aren't vegan. For sure. We know that this place is full of history. Um, Ra, will you tell us more about the awesome history of John's? I'm so glad you asked. So, as you can say, we, uh, this building is one of the last tenements uh, of a row of tenements. And it's built on land donated by Peter Stuyvesant to St. Mark's Church. The land was used as a cemetery until 1855. And they dug everybody up and moved them out to Brooklyn. And this is the last room we think they got everybody up. But um, part of our history through the 1920s, um, again, this area was a lot of Italians coming in, expats. Some of them, not the nicest of people. One was a guy named Giuseppe Mazzaria, who was, for lack of a better word, local gangster. And this was his neighborhood. But he had two number one guys. One was Charles Lucky Luciano, and one was Vito Genovese, who anyone who's a fan of the Mafia and Godfather will recognize these names. But this was their hangout, because they lived around the corner. And during Prohibition, Mama John, as she was affectionately known, made her own wine and whiskey in the basement. And if you'll see later, or at some point, you're gonna see our big candles in the back. They started here in the front window they were the signal when they were lit you, you can come in and ask for dessert at which point you would go upstairs to the speakeasy through our side door and they would serve you the beverage of your choice whiskey wine whatever we had and a plate of cake so if anybody looked in oh you're having dessert so that's how the candle started john with money made from that because he was also selling the booze of Giuseppe Mazzaria opened up the back room so the bar was not there and opposite the bar was the little kitchen and there was a backyard that was it John opened up the back room put the kitchen all the way in the back and built the bar figuring one day he thinks he's going to need it so that was the thing we moved the candles to the back room and that was the rule up to 1933 when prohibition ended and we light those candles every night uh, they're over 100 years old, about 300 pounds of wax, and the original bottles underneath are 
from the 1920s. Um, for everything else in this front room is untouched since 1908. The murals John had painted because him and his fellow expats were very provincial people. The reason they fled, they didn't like the central government of Italy. If you were from Sicily or Corleone, that's where you were from. And these murals depict, I believe, the eight original provinces of Italy, which is why he had a local paint them in 1908. So they've been up there. And he brought over the terrazzo, the tile, all came from Italy. And even when he put the kitchen in in the mid 20s, he tried, he went back to the same quarry to get the same tiles. You'll see there's a slight difference in the colors. But everything is from, from, from there, and our Art Deco bar is still still working and we're now putting it to good use, thankfully. So I think so many New Yorkers know about the, the candles here at John's. I did not know that back during Prohibition they represented um, that alcohol was going to be served, whether it was wine or whiskey right. or whatever you had in the back with dessert. Um, that's super cool that there was a speakeasy here. A real speakeasy, not a fake one. This is a real, real piece of history, and that's so cool to right. know. And you know that led to what Lu Luciano and uh, Genovese, once they got rid of their boss in a rather horrible way, and were talking to the Jewish mob, Murder Incorporated, my people, um, and great advertising. We knew exactly what they do, right? Um, Luciano came back here with the five biggest clans that were operating in Manhattan, sat them down in the back, and came up with what we now know as the five families and what we now know as the Mafia, even though there's no such thing as the Mafia. My godfather would say, Austin. I had one in Brooklyn, another story for another time. <laughs> but they came here, they met in our back room, and they divvied up the city. And eventually Genovese got his family. Uh, Luciano was deported back to Italy. But he's the one that came up with the commission. Which if you ever seen the movie The Godfather, when they all get together to resolve it, that's the commission. And that was Luciano's idea and they came up with that here. So that's another little piece of history. Um, I won't even get into the uh, beatnik generation and all the poets who used to hang out <laughs> here. And, um, and stuff like that. Sam Shepard coming in from around the corner, workshopping his plays here at St. Mark's, coming here for spaghetti with Patti Smith. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got the good stuff. Okay, Rob, will you please tell us about the dishes that we have in front of us? It smells amazing. I cannot wait to dig in. So much garlic. Yeah. <laughs> These are your traditional, more northern Italian, very red sauce. Um, your meat, not, you know, southern Italy is more fish, even though we do have a great uh, seafood menu. But these are your traditional chicken palm is our go-to winner. And the sauce is all, you know, homemade, handmade sauce. Um, meatballs, again, we have, you, I think you have, yes, meatballs are your traditional, like we used to do in Brooklyn. They were doing it before us. Your, your, your chopped meat, veal, pork, meatballs. Again, the meat sauce is all original. It's got that Italian northern with your little vegetables mixed in there to make it nice and hearty. Remember, you're talking people, not a lot of money, so it had to be really filling. So if they didn't have meat, they would still make their sauces with a lot of different ingredients in it. Um, these are our, pretty much our one and two go-to for people coming in, just one. You know, you know what I just need, like you said, spaghetti and meatballs. It's the best. And it's the best. And my go-to again, when, when I come in, they know bring me out, it's either the chicken palm, Never go wrong with a lasagna, which I'm probably going to take home tonight to the wife. It's another favorite. Yeah, and my wife inhales that. Um, so, and then I do, you know, with the appetite, every time I'm here, if I'm here with friends, I'm getting appetized, it's the calamari and the clams. I could eat that all just by itself, yeah. right? Um, garlic bread, I have to tell, remind people, there are people here who don't know when you get garlic, you gotta have something to dip it in. 
right? Nobody needs a fork. All the sauce, you just take the bread and you scoop yeah, it up, and that's how you eat it. That's how you eat it. We know, right? Are you a native New Yorker? No, it must be a Jewish thing, too. There you go. She <laughs> knows. Us guys, you know, we were all... And even when my Italian sister-in-law joined the family and her father did all the cooking and I, he put out pasta and sauce, I said, can I have some bread? Oh no, we don't eat bread because you have the, the pasta. I said, no, 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 no. I did a sauce, there's something to dip in, you give me some bread. Exactly. You know, if you don't have Italian bread, give me some rye bread. I don't care yeah, what it is, but I'm, <laughs> but I'm dipping. Especially the rye. So these are, and we, we always, and we've never strayed no matter what from these very the hearty filling. We want you to walk home with a plate. To go. To go. First, I'm going to try the chicken parm. Can't go wrong. We all already know. It is everything you want in a New York, when you think New York chicken parm. That sauce is super fresh. It's homemade. It's got just the right amount of flavor. It's very balanced. And of course, the, the chicken is perfectly breaded and it's covered in a mountain of cheese that's ooey gooey and delicious. Like, what's not to love? So now I'm gonna try my favorite. Okay, the chicken parm is my favorite too, but the spaghetti meatballs, I think, are my absolute favorite here at John's. So let's cut right into this because you don't need a knife, it's like butter. And then, of course, they serve it with a hearty meat sauce. So you're not just getting the meatballs, you're getting the meat ragu or the bolognese or whatever you want to call it. So we get a big bite and we're going in. No joke. And until somebody proves me wrong, this is the best spaghetti and meatballs in New York City. I can't think of anywhere that does it as well as John's. And it's so good. I have to go back in and keep eating that sauce. So. Rob, do you want to do hey. a uh, bread and sauce cheers with me? With you. Thank Boom. you so much for having us. It has been such a pleasure, and thank you for telling us so much more about the history of John's. And I can't wait to do, to do eat more. <laughs> Ooh. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Never get old. Ever. This has been Laura Bray at Lauragram NYC on Instagram, here for Flavors of New York at the iconic John's of 12th Street, serving up the most amazing Italian food in New York City. I'm just so glad you're still here, and thanks for everything again. My pleasure. Thanks for coming in. <laughs>